Of all the missing bodies for the Blue Jackets this season, I think the one they missed the most was Zach Rensky. We're going to talk about that and what we expect from number eight next season on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you the good, the bad and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Here with me today, as always, is my co-host, Hayden Heilshorn. And uh, we want to thank you before we get started. Uh, we want to thank you for making us your first listen or your first watch every single day. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you. That's all. I uh, just, wanted, just wanted to start off. With that, uh, Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms and over on YouTube and also the SiriusXM app. Today, Hayden, we are talking all about Zach Um, Technically, this is his season review. Um, I don't know that we're going to do much reviewing necessarily because he only played 13 games. But as I, as we were kind of talking about a little bit uh, just before we started recording... Zach Wierenski, uh, just before he went down with uh, a torn labrum, I believe it was, uh, 13 games into the season, he had three goals and five assists in those 13 games. So, like, he was on a pretty a pretty hot start. How did you feel? At the t- it, was, it was a while ago, you know, I understand if you don't have, like, a super good detailed memory of, of what the start of the season was. I personally have kind of repressed a lot of it. How do you think the start of the season went for Zach Wierenski? At the start of the season went good enough to the point I still believed at the time that he was playing that the Blue Jackets were a playoff team. That's where that's how good the start of his season was. And it, it wasn't good for the team, but Zach Rensky came out, played the way that you kind of expected him to play based off how he signed that huge contract in the offseason. He, he was coming into last year first year on his $9 million a year deal. And through 13 games, he looked really, really good. It's just so unfortunate he got hurt after that Flyers injury. And I'm glad you reminded me of the injury. All I remember is being at a Jackets game in the middle of March, and they like cut to uh, one of the Jackets suites, and Zach Wierenski was just up there with a sling on. And I just remember thinking, oh, wow, should be would be nice to have that guy on the ice, but I see he's got a sling on, so understand why we don't have him but through the first 13 games in the season Jay I thought he was doing good man I thought he was doing really really good I didn't feel like any of the defensive breakdowns were really his fault I think that shows in his plus minus he was producing points steadily he had a good he was on track for a 50 point season the way that he came out and it just like I said the injury just took it all away along with any hopes I had of this team making the playoffs yeah, so I just went and, and double checked at uh, the Blue Jackets at the time of uh, Wierenski's injury. If I've done my math right, uh, he was injured in the uh, November 10th game against Philadelphia. That was the 13th game of the season. The Blue Jackets were four and nine at that point in the season. They just come back from that horrible, awful, no good, very bad uh, series in. Uh, Finland, which uh, Patrick Lyon famously was like, man, we shouldn't have even bothered flying out. That was embarrassing, uh, which I, I can relate. But um, yeah, I kind of, I was looking at it and I was looking at all of the guys that were injured this season. Obviously, you know, a lot of guys missed a lot of time. I think Zach Kwarenski was the, the the person that they missed the most. Um, and I feel like um, something we're going to talk about in a second is his contract. And I do feel like the expectation for Zach Wierenski is real high because his contract is so much. I mean, um, I looked it up. He's the third highest paid defenseman in the NHL um, right now behind only Eric Carlson and Drew Doughty. I don't necessarily know that Zach Wierenski is a $9.5 million defenseman. However, I think because of that contract, people tend to overrate him a little bit, and I feel like they don't realize, or non-Blue Jacket fans anyway, don't super realize, like, how good he is for this team. You know? 
Um, and I think they missed him. I think they really missed him. Uh, the season was kind of mostly over by the time he went down with an injury anyway. You know, they talk about how, what is it, like by American Thanksgiving, uh, the season's done, which I think was like a week or two later. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know if they'd had, like 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 you said, 50 point. He was uh, on, a, on a 50 point pace and a 19 goal pace. Um, so that would have been, Almost a season high. Um, he scored 20 goals in 2019-20 season, uh, but he only had 41 points. 50 points would be a season high. Um, interestingly, uh, his season high is only one point more than his rookie season, which I think is very is very funny. He had 47 points in his rookie season, 48 points last year. But that's beside the point. They missed this guy. They missed him real bad. And I think people are looking at... Um, what the Blue Jackets are adding this offseason. And they're like, well, they only added Provorov and Severson. They didn't, though. Essentially, they're adding, a knock on wood, a healthy Zach Wierenski back, you know? Um, and I don't think you can overstate how important he is to this team. Yeah, I mean, you just said it right there in his contract. Like, yeah, that's a very high contract, top three in that position in the NHL. Carlson and Drew Doughty. Dowdy's got two cups in his back pocket. Carlson's been to the cup final, I think, twice. Like, man, maybe just the once, but we all know who Eric Carlson is. I don't need to explain that. But between those three guys, Jay, I'd rather have Zach Wierenski on my team right now in their career. So I don't really look at where he's at in terms of who he's being compared to and, and use that as the benchmark. I just want him to be the same guy he's been his first six years in Columbus, which is – the best defenseman in Blue Jackets hit franchise history. That's that's just a, a fact. No, like, that, feels, that feels like a, a hot take. Um, it, I'll, it, I'll allow it because I also agree. I think people people really liked Seth Jones for, what was he here, for six years or something? Um, but he left. Um, and the fact of the matter is, I think him, him leaving meant that they could pay Zach Wierenski all this money. And also... Sometimes you've got to pay, you've got to overpay to keep people. Sometimes you know they wanted to keep Zach Wierenski. They just lost Seth Jones. Um, they don't have to pay Seth. Jo- like if they'd kept Seth Jones, there's no way both of them would be making the money that they're making. You know, so do you lowball both of them and then they both leave in free agency three years down the line, or do you trade one of them because you know he's not staying? And then you sign, you lock Zach Wierenski up long term, and make all of the Red Wings fans who are convinced that he's coming home to Michigan stop talking. You know, um, it's uh, that did feel I, good. That felt really good to do yeah. that. By the way, for Jackets fans, you know, to to steal <laughs> that one over the Red Wings, that was nice. I know. I spent I spent a lot of last. Uh, I think it was last season, or maybe the season before. But immediately before Dylan Larkin signed his big kind of long term extension, I did spend a lot of time needling the locked on Red Wings fans about how we were going to steal Dylan Larkin. Um, because obviously it's very well known that he and he and Zach Wierenski are like best friends off the ice. Uh, Wierenski, I believe, graduated high school early, specifically so he could go and play at Michigan with Dylan Larkin, which is a very cute story. Um, so I spent a lot of time needling them and being like, "Hey, you couldn't get Zach Wierenski, but we're going to get Dylan Larkin." Um, so, you know, it's, uh, sometimes it feels good to, to poke fun at the Red Wings. You know, they've had a good history and they, we deserve it, frankly. Um, in a minute, we're going to talk a little bit more about, uh, Warensky, specifically kind of what he's done for this team in, in his time as a Blue Jacket. Uh, we're going to do that in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. But first, though, I'm going to tell you about our next partner, uh, AG1. This is the daily foundational foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. Uh, I gave AG1 a try because uh, I was feeling tired all the time. I tried a bunch of supplements and they just weren't working. And I heard really great things about AG1. So I gave them a try and it's changed my life. Uh, That sounds melodramatic. It's not. I feel so much better. I drink it in the morning, I'll get up, I'll put the kettle on, I'll make tea, I'll make coffee, I'll make my AG1, and uh, I'm just ready to, to take on the day. Uh, I haven't gone to the gym yet, but I feel like if I did, AG1 would be the perfect uh, pre-gym kind of routine to have. 
All great athletes have one thing in common. They take care of their bodies. And a huge part of that starts with optimizing whole body health. And a lot of them also drink AG1. And that's why I'm a huge fan as well. With every daily serving, I'm setting myself up for success with 75 high quality ingredients that give me key daily nutrients, support energy, focus, strength, and clarity. It is a micro habit that delivers macro benefits and helps just about everybody take great care of their health every single day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1. Get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs for your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Once again, that's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Go ahead and check it out. Okay, Hayden. I have been doing a ton of research into the Cleveland Monsters recently for an unrelated to this podcast project. Is Zach Wierenski one of the greatest monsters of all time? Is that is that too dramatic to say so? I just, whenever I think of the monsters, I think of that team that won the cup. I think of Wierenski. I think of Bjorkstrand. I think of Corpusalo. You know, is that the best team that the, the monsters have ever fielded? Considering the fact that, to my knowledge, it's the only Calder Cup that the Monsters have won, I'm going to go with yes. Uh, I'm a little biased. I was also in the building for Game 4 when they beat the Hershey Bears. That was pretty electric. Felt like a Stanley Cup atmosphere. I don't know what that feels like, but it felt like what that would feel like. I said earlier that he's the best defenseman in Blue Jackets history, and that shouldn't shock people. If you look at the points, he is the all-time leader in points at that position. He's played 100 less games than Fedor Tutin. So he's he's already locked that up for me. I mean, it's just a long way to go, I guess, in Blue Jackets history. But as it stands right now, Zach Rensky at 26 years old is the best defenseman to lace up the skates in the CBJ uniform. And I think when it came down to, I remember the Blue Jackets were battling, do we, do we keep Seth or do we keep Zach? And they ended up keeping Zach. And at the time, I thought... At the time, I was so naive that I actually thought, I was like, oh, man, Chicago got the better defenseman. And then their paths have kind of played out so far, and they've both been playing for similar teams, teams that are trying to tank for the number one overall pick. And even though Zach Rensky didn't <laughs> play worth a damn last year, he still looks better in that time period than Seth Jones looked as a Blackhawk. So – I really, really like what the Jackets have done with Zach Rensky in his career so far, taking him from a first round, I believe it was, what, sixth overall draft pick and and molding him into a, a top three paid NHL defenseman, a guy, you know, who has top 20 odds to win the Norris Trophy this year. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, for sure. Zach Rensky is currently seventh. All to, uh, overall in uh, Blue Jackets skaters for points all time. Uh, the only active Blue Jacket ahead of him is Boone Jenner. Uh, Wierenski has 245 points in 416 NHL games so far. That, to me, feels, for a defenseman, that feels pretty darn good. Uh, the current leader, obviously, is Rick Nash uh, at 547. Uh, I don't know. I, it's going to be a minute before anyone overtakes him. I think there are a couple of guys on the team that could do that right now, but Zach Rensky, he's he's probably going to finish up there in points. Um, I am, again, just going to knock on wood, but like he, to me, feels like a big candidate for maybe the first guy to hit a 1,000 games as a Blue Jacket. And I know that that's a, a while away now. He's seven seasons in, and he's at 416. Obviously, he's missed a bunch of time with injuries, but if Boone Jenner doesn't make it, Zach Krenzi is going to be the first guy to play all 1,000 games as a Blue Jacket, which is real cool, I think. I was just going to say he's got six years left on this contract that he's on right now, so he'll have plenty of time. I can't rip off the math right away in my head if he played every single game. He might need a he might need one more contract with the Jackets to reach that number, but certainly, definitely. I mean, he seems to like the city of Columbus. He is absolutely the next Jacket that you would say would be in line to be a captain when Boone Jenner eventually, I guess, either moves on or retires or whatever. But in my eyes, he already is the he already is a captain. He's the captain of, like, the rock stars on the team. Like, he is 
Like when I think of Zach Rensky, I just think of this kind of like uh, just this like goofball looking guy <laughs> that is the most athletic guy on the ice for whatever reason. Like he shouldn't be the most athletic guy on the ice, but he is. He's sneaky athletic. You don't get to the level that he's at both offense and defense. And people think only him as offensive, like player that likes to come down, shoot the puck. He can do that. It's because of his athletic ability that he's able to also get back on defense. And his defense has improved every single game I watch him play. So he's taking that role as, you know, the Victor Hedman of the team, kind of like I'm I'm going to be the – the cornerstone of this team. We're going to be the reason why we won a cup because I'm just going to be sitting here in a rocking chair and nobody's getting to our tendy unless they get through me first like that. And also at the same time, he's going to put a shot on net on the other end of the ice. He's that good. Um, he's absolutely everything I want out of a defenseman. And I think in 13 games, we got to see a little bit of it. If you just watch those first 13 games of the Jackets season, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll realize, wow, yes, that is the player that the Jackets missed all year. But, I mean, when you talk when you talk about – I don't even know what you said before I even went on that rant there about him. But I love Zach Rensky. He's a captain of the Rock Stars. I, I love the guy. I don't know what – like, he's he's awesome. He's I feel like my memories of Zach Rensky so far as a Jacket are – you know, there's him taking that puck to the face in that series against the Penguins. And, you know, that was a low moment. There was uh, another low moment was in, in that Bruins game when he, uh, you know, tripped over the blue line and then Bruins scored in overtime and won. But again, that was all before he's even turned, you know, 25. That all happened like he's been through so much with this team already. And he's also had the game winning goal moments, too, where he's. Like he's just he's an amazing player that people forget about on the ice simply because they just they they don't look at him as a threat because he doesn't have that like huge physical presence. He doesn't have the big scruffy beard, you know, that that some of these defensemen have. He doesn't have these big broad shoulders, but at the end of the day, he's one of the most athletic guys on the ice and it shows. Yeah, for sure. I I went to look it up, actually. Um he literally just turned twenty six, like last week, you know? He's still, it feels weird to consider him one of the veterans because he's 26 years old, you know? Um, but he's he's been around, I think he's the second longest tenured Blue Jacket behind Boone Jenner. Don't quote me on that. Um, but also to, to just kind of finish off that point that you made kind of near the, near, near the beginning there, um, I think a lot of people see him just as an offensive threat. That's not, I don't know, he's, he is a very good two-way defenseman he is obviously always going to be more offensively minded than not uh and i think having pairing him with someone this is why the idea of pairing him and uh, Adam Boquist together has never really kind of gelled with me because that's two guys that think offense first that's why he worked so well with seth jones is because you had one guy that was more offensively minded, one guy that was more kind of two-way and defensively minded, you know? Um, Seth Jones allowed Zach Wierenski to kind of reach new heights with his offense. And that's why I'm kind of banging this drum of put Zach Wierenski with either Juracek, David Juracek or Damon Severson. Because, but in my mind, both of those guys can be difference makers and they can play kind of more of a support role and let Zach Rensky do that kind of roving thing that he loves to do, you know? Um, Cause that's kind of what he was for the first few years of his, of his NHL career was he was that guy that was basically a fourth forward and it really paid dividends for the blue jackets. Uh, I think missing, like having him back, uh, which we're going to talk about in a second, uh, the power play was dismal this year. It's been dismal for a lot of years, but it was especially bad this year, I think. Um, I can only imagine what having Warensky back is going to do for that. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I think, I think the world of Zach Warensky's game. And I, I'm always kind of, I go back and forth on this contract because on the one hand, I am fully in favor of players clawing as much money as they physically can out of the hands of the billionaire owners and the league. On the, on the other hand, if Zach Wierenski was making 7.5, 8.5 million, he would be talked about in so much more of a positive light. I feel like that contract is almost 
devaluing the work that he does because he's quote unquote overpaid. Um, I, I just I have a question though, Jay. What what more do Jackets fans need out of him at this point in that contract? Because we're kind of signing that contract, hoping that in year three or four of that contract, like he's win he's winning he's won a Norris Trophy by then. I mean, I know that's still like crazy hard to do, but he's at least in the conversation for it every single year, no matter what. And I think on this trajectory, by the time he turns 28, 29, he will be talked about in that light because right now he plays the game and it's just the game just seems to be so slow to him. And if you just watch the way that his footwork is when he's, you know, skating back on defense, he does so much more than some of these other players that we have can do. You know, Andrew Peak is he tries so hard to, you know, cover as much ice as he can. Zach Orensky just he effortlessly covers ice. Um, granted, he gets burnt, but he, you know, he's a, he's he's playing the in the hardest division in the NHL. Like he's gonna get burnt. That's effortless is a effortless is a really good word there. I think because Zach Wensky is not one of those defensemen that like you know how sometimes you watch a defenseman and you only notice them when they screw up. Zach Wensky is not that kind of defenseman, but I do watch him play, and he does make it look so easy that I'm almost sometimes like, man, I could do that. I couldn't do that. In no like in no <laughs> universe could I do that. Like I would trip over my feet and and break my nose on the ice immediately. But like he makes it look really easy. Um and I think again that's something that is almost a mark against him because I think it looks sometimes like he's not trying. Yeah, um, it does. Which was a criticism that uh one of my favorite blue jackets, Brandon Sard, uh Got, a, got that criticism all the time of he's not even trying. Look at it. And he just, he has a really efficient skating style that looks like he's not trying very hard. And he is, he's, he's trying. It just doesn't look like it. And you kind of, you get that same impression from Zach Gorensky. He's just kind of really chill on the ice. Um, unless he's tried to punch Dylan Larkin in the face, which is still one of my all-time favorite um, Zach Gorensky moments is when I think they were in Detroit and all of the, both of their families were there. And they got in a full a full fight um just very funny very funny um it's gonna be tough to like hand out a grade for zach Wierenski, i think but i do think what we'll do in a minute is we'll give him some homework um and we'll also give a quick shout out to uh cap city elite because they are playing later today and uh, there's a couple of guys they're going to be joining them for the first time so we'll talk about those things in just a second here on a lockdown blue jackets All right, Hayden. In a second, we'll talk about handing out some hope, some summer homework to Zach Gorensky. But big news, the Cap City Elite Hockey, you know it. We've been talking about it for basically since it started here on the podcast. Two new faces uh, tomorrow, at least two new faces, um, maybe more. Nick Blankenberg is in town. He's going to be playing uh, in, in, well, I say tomorrow. It's going to be today. Uh, we're recording this on Monday night. Um He's going to be in town, which is super exciting. And on the ice, playing hockey for the first time since November 10th, uh, Zach Wierenski is going to be back. Zach Wierenski's back in town. He's going to be suiting up for, I want to say back oh. hockey, but I could be wrong about that, um, which is super exciting. It's going to be the first time that a lot of fans will have a chance to see him. Uh, basically, since, since the injury, you know, he's kind of been around the team. Uh, doing things, but he hasn't played hockey in in quite a little while. So I'm just trying to find the tweet that says what who he's playing for. Uh, he's oh he's joining High Bank Distillery, uh, not um, not Battery. And then Nick Blankenberg is going to be playing for Blade Tech Hockey. So neither of them will be wearing that super cool like Miami Vice style uh, <laughs> pink and blue yeah. that they're wearing for the six the six one four, but. If you don't have anything to do around lunchtime today, go check out two Michigan guys playing hockey in Columbus. I think it's going to be really fun. Okay. I'll be there. Yep. I can confirm. We'll hey, be there. There we go. Hayden. Hockey. See Hayden? Tell him, tell him, hey. Uh, Give me a high five. Keep an eye out for him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, Hayden. We know that you love giving out homework on this show. What do you want? Zach Gorensky, like, what do you want for, okay, let's, this is kind of a two-part question, I think. Like, what does Zach Gorensky need to do to have a successful season? 
And what do you think, well, like, what do you expect from, from Wierenski next season? Beyond the obvious, like, hey, stay healthy and play, you know, I'd like to see 75 plus games from Wierenski this season. Um, but beyond that, what do you want to see from, from Zach Wierenski next season? I mean, I, I, that's all I have to say is to stay healthy because I've absolutely loved the way that this guy has played. I, I've, I never have an issue with him. I never have an issue with him. And some people would say, Hayden, well, you're just you're, you're too deep in your fandom. You like you're too blinded by your love for this man. Like you need to you need to see the flaws in his game. But truthful, truthfully, he is one of the best draft picks the Jackets have ever taken in the first round. And I, I stand on that. He is a very good hockey player. He provides a ton of offense for the Jackets that when he's not in the lineup, guess what happens? We're tanking for number one overall pick. So if you ask me how I think his season's going to go, I can only go off how it seems like every season seems to go, which is he's going to be you know almost up there, like a point a game defenseman. It's going to feel like that. We're probably going to hit, you know, right before the All-Star break or right around December. He's going to get hurt for hopefully just two or three weeks. Nothing crazy long. But at some point, he's probably going to get banged up because, hey, he's playing on our top two pair and he's playing he's playing his heart off. Like, let's just say that. Let's call it as it is. He gets hurt, but I would never call him a fragile man because this guy is literally taking a puck to the face. I've seen him get his leg twisted up, leave down the tunnel and come back out in the same game. He's a tough guy. So I'm not saying like he's fragile by no means, but his season at some point, he's probably going to get banged up. He's probably going to miss some time. I just want to see him playing for the jackets when it matters. That's what I want to see. Just, just make it longer than you did this past year. If you can get 40 games in before you have your season ending injury, Great, man. I just I want to watch as much of you play Zach Wierenski as possible. So just give that to me and I'll be happy. I think this is where I think that the trades of Provorov and the sign and the, the trade for Provorov and the trade, the sign and trade with Severson are going to kind of come through a little bit is those are two guys that are durable. They don't get injured a lot. Knock on wood. Um, because the, the Blue Jackets curse can happen to anyone when you're least expecting it, you know. Um, but I think what's going to happen is Zach Wierenski is going to be playing fewer minutes this season, which I think is a good thing. Um, shout out to Morgan, uh, who constantly calls me out on saying that I think Blue Jackets players should play less minutes because then who's going to play all of the minutes if everyone's playing like 10 minutes a night? That's not what I mean. Zach Wierenski will quite happily play 25 to 27 minutes a night. That is too dang much. If you can get like 20 to 22 minutes, no. Yeah, let's say 22 to 24 minutes out of that top pairing. So Wierenski and whoever. And then you're getting about the same, let's say 20 to 22 minutes out of your second pairing. Like to me, that's ideal. Your third pairing plays, I don't know what the math is off the top of my head there, 16 to 18 minutes. Um, But like... I think I think having two guys that are durable and can take that load will help Wierenski. This is not me saying that Wierenski is like fragile or anything like that. And I don't think you can like you can't cardio your way out of a torn labrum, you know. Like I've watched I've watched the hit a bunch of times because people insist on replaying injuries over and over again, which drives me crazy. But like you watch the hit, it's not something that he could have avoided by like lifting extra weights in the summer, you know? I don't, know if even, I don't know if you guys know what a labrum is, but you can't like, you can't train, uh, you can't train a labrum to like not tear, you know, it's just a, a nasty mistake and bad luck that I think that's the second season in a row that he's done that. So hopefully, you know, he doesn't make it a third season, but having those guys, I think if Zakarensky's playing fewer minutes, he's going to be get he's going to be getting less banged up. He's going to be more effective. And yeah, like you said, I, I want to see, I, I don't want to see Zach Rensky playing 27, 28, 29 minutes at night. You know, can he? Great. Should he? No. Um, I don't know. I've been banging the, the 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 load management for defenseman drum for like three seasons now because I just don't think that people say it's a good thing that you can get, a, that the guy can play. Like it's always, um, who was it? Who's it talked about a lot? But like Seth Jones plays a lot. Um 
Um, I'm completely blanking on literally any other top defenseman in the league right now. I know it was a big thing when Duncan Keith was kind of in his prime. Yes, it Duncan was, Keith, Duncan but Keith, he has different blood. Duncan Keith could play 35 minutes a night and be fine. Uh, Drew Doughty. Brian Suter fine. plays a lot yeah, of minutes. Brian Suter, yeah. These guys play a million minutes a night, and it's spoken about as, like, a good thing. And I don't think it is. I think all that says to me is that you don't trust your other defensemen, you know? I would love for I would love for Orensky to play twenty three minutes a game every game, and that's the most. And then that's that's kind of it. So I guess it's not really homework for Orensky specifically because I don't think he needs to do anything but like continue to play his game and hopefully not tear his arm off. Um, I guess this is homework for Mike Babcock more than more than anyone else. Um, I should go back and look. Actually, I'm not going to do this right now because we're gonna we're gonna wrap up in a minute. But I would be interested to see what the the ice time was like for Mike Babcock's Leafs, for example, and how that kind of played out. So I'll be interested mm. to, to kind of, maybe I'll have a look at that. I'll bring you my results of my research uh, next episode, but we're kind of, we're going to leave it from here. Uh, we're going to leave it for now. Yes. I've I've forgotten how grammar works. Uh, we're going to leave it there for now. Uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, I don't know what we're going to talk about tomorrow. What should we talk about tomorrow? Um, let's talk about uh, the next defenseman on our list of defensemen to review, uh, who is... Oh, we're going to be talking about everybody's favourite, uh, Gavin Bayreuther, who is, I believe, back with the Dallas Stars now. So we're going to talk about how his season went. He uh, he got a big, uh, a big uh, increase in his role this season uh, through no kind of fault or, or uh, of his own. But we'll talk about him, see how he went. Do we miss him? Should we have re-signed him, etc. Things like that. Uh, on tomorrow's episode. Thank you for listening to this episode. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J A K O B F O R S T E R. I'm going to be there until they turn off the lights at Twitter or x.com or whatever they're call- calling it Twitter. You can't stop me. Um, Hayden is at Hayden H971. The show is at L O underscore Blue Jackets. Uh, shout out to whoever literally just subscribed to the YouTube channel if you're watching. You're the real MVP. Uh, this is it. It is four six. It is four sixteen p.m. Uh, on Monday afternoon. If you are in fact watching, um, we're going to do a, a happy hour uh, on on Friday. I think about six p.m. Eastern. Hayden and I will have a beer. We'll answer some questions. We'll have a chat. Uh, probably talk some more about Zakharensky. That seems to be the, the the topic of the of the moment right now. Uh, what How about else? whether Patrick Line is going to be a good center or not? He seems yeah, to be there very we go. We'll, talk, we'll, we'll do the, the Patrick Line center debate. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms. We're over on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> like, subscribe, leave a comment if you want to. Uh, make sure you keep your eye out for uh, Hayden uh, later today at uh, Cap City Elite. I'm assuming he's going to be hiding somewhere with his bag of Wendy's for lunch, uh, but you'll uh, keep an eye out for him. Uh, take a take a, a, a paparazzi shot if you see him. Don't do that. Uh, that's that's <laughs> that's unnecessary. But he's friendly. He doesn't bite. Uh, come come say hi to to the show, and uh, we will see all of you tomorrow for uh, Gavin Berry with the discussion. And until then, make sure you stay locked on. <laughs>